Right, so today we're going to talk about um, foam rolling and in particular we're going to talk about foam rolling for your legs. A lot of you out there have started running. Um, I'm not a massive fan of running but that's a story for another time. But what is important is to keep the muscles in your legs soft and supple. Um, so to avoid injury and to avoid irritation and pain while you're running. So this little short video is going to show you the basics of how to foam roll your legs to keep the muscles supple and flexible. All right. foam rolling for your legs. Um, the reason foam rolling is good is it helps um, keep the muscles supple and soft and it's also good for myofascial release. Now myofascial release is releasing the fascia. If you don't know what fascia is, fascia is the connective tissue that holds all our muscle and skin and soft tissues together in the body. If you've ever been to the butchers and um, seen them cut off that white stringy sinewy stuff, that's fascia. We've got it as well. Um, it keeps everything connected. Now, if you continuously impact an area, we risk getting adhesions and trigger points in the fascia and the muscles. So that's why foam rolling is a good idea um, because it helps release those um, areas and get everything sort of loosened up and keeps us a bit supple. So one of the key things with foam rolling that are key mistakes that I hear is, um, from people is they do it too often and for too long. You really don't want to foam roll any muscle longer than 20 seconds because any longer than that um, you avoid irritating the area causing further inflammation and causing more problems. Um, another point is um, people doing foam rolling too frequently. Now um, when you're doing foam rolling you're breaking down adhesions and scar tissue within the muscle within the fascia that the body then has to recover lay down new muscle tissue and repair. So if you're doing it too frequently, the body doesn't have a chance to do this repair and you actually slow down your healing process, slow down muscle repair and slow down progression of like gaining and building muscle and muscle strength and endurance. So it's really important not to do it for too long and not to do it for do it too often. I recommend 20 seconds on each muscle and I recommend um, every other day for foam rolling. So do it on your days that you're not training. Um, use it and then allow recovery. Um, you don't. You definitely don't want to be doing this every day. You could even be doing it as little as once a week to help release off um, the tension in your muscles, but definitely not every day. Right, so where do we start? So we're going to work, um, we're going to start on the quads, the front of the legs. Now this muscle runs from the very top of your hips and all the way down to your knees. So we want to work that whole area. Now, it's difficult to foam roll that whole area in one go. So I normally suggest is break it down into two sections. Start on the top portion and then, and then for 20 seconds and then move down and do the middle portion and the middle to bottom portion for 20 seconds and go right down to the sort of where the, the top of your knee starts because that's we're going to get onto the tendon there as well and it helps if we can sort of do a little bit of release into that area. Um, and just want to do a nice gentle backwards and forwards movement nice and slow gradual don't rock through it too quickly if you do it too fast you're not actually benefiting it does hurt it is uncomfortable so we've got to do it nice and slowly um, so a measured pace and 20 seconds and I would do 20 seconds on the upper portion 20 seconds on the lower portion now after you've done that we're going to turn over and we're going to do the hamstrings it's basically the opposite muscle group to the the quads. It's on the back of the leg. These ones go right up into the buttock and all the way to the back of the knee. So again, I would suggest splitting this into two sec sections um, and working from the top to the middle and then from the middle to the bottom. It's just easier that way. You're not trying to drag yourself along the whole length, like the whole length of your hamstrings along the roller. That can be quite difficult and cumbersome. And then again, nice slow movements, nice and gentle, um, and about 20 seconds on each portion. After we've done that one, we're going to move on to the calf. Now the calf, this will be a particularly tender area in runners. 
um, and we want to make sure we work out those tensions. It's important to note that um, you may find some areas tighter than the calves than others. Um, if you do find that the outer area of your calf is quite tight, this can often be an indication that you're overpronating for your foot when you're running. So I would always suggest uh, getting your gait analysed or checking um, and checking to see if you need an arch support because commonly when the um, foot overpronates, the lateral aspect of the gastrox, the outside part of the calf, will overcompensate to try and pull the foot back into the position and the ankle and the knee back into the position it needs to be in. So if you do find the outer sections a bit more painful than the um, the rest of the calf, then it could be an indication of that. And I would suggest going to see someone to get it checked out. But back to the foam rolling. We want to, again, nice and slowly, the calf you can probably do all in one hit. You don't need to divide it into two sections. And you want to start either at the top or the bottom and then work your way all the way down to the other end. 20 seconds on this muscle. If you want to hit the outside of the calf a little bit more, I suggest just externally rotating your hip and turning your leg out. And that will work down that outer portion and you'll feel that hit that section a little bit more. Um, and we want to work through these muscles, keep the calves nice and supple and keep them loose. It's a common area that people neglect is their calves and they get quite tight and it can lead to things like Achilles tendinopathy um, and eventually can lead on to plantar fasciitis which we don't want. After you've done the calf we've got one more to do and we've saved the best till last. Uh, it's the IT band. I'm sure a lot of you runners out there have heard of the IT band. Um, it's a commonly tight area. It's a fascial band that runs from the outs from the hip down to the outside of your knee and it's a big connective tissue point for a lot of the muscles in your legs. This is uncomfortable. It's not a pleasant area to foam roll. Um, I don't like doing it. I don't think anyone likes doing it. Um, most people will avoid doing it, but it is an important area to do because if left um, and chronic tension builds up in that area, we can have all sorts of problems. You may have heard of things like runner's hip. We're gonna turn onto our side for this one. Um, Probably we want to break this one down into two sections as well, unless you're particularly short and have quite short legs, and you might be able to do it all in one. But again, start from your hip bone and then work all the like just below your hip bone and then work all the way down the whole portion of the IT band. But as I said, you may want to break it into two sections. Again, no longer than 20 seconds on this area, nice and slowly. Um, all of the, like foam rolling your legs is quite tricky. I find the IT band probably the trickiest one to get at a position. You want to use your other leg to support your weight as well as your arm or your shoulder and glide yourself up and down the foam roller. Um, and But make sure that your leg that's on the roller is nice and relaxed. We want the foot relaxed on the floor so you should be able to slide your foot along and um, nice and controlled and slowly like that. So that's it really, quite simple, quite easy, very painful, um, no one likes doing it, but if you are, if you have started running or if you have started increasing your running, it's an important thing for you to do. Um, as I said earlier, I wouldn't recommend doing foam rolling too much because you can actually cause more injuries. So really, every other day at the maximum, but probably twice a week it would be sufficient as long as you're putting it in with other stretches for your legs and the muscles in your legs. Um, because you can overwork the area, you can bruise the tissues and the muscles around the area and end up leading to more problems and that will only like slow down your running. So really, I, I would probably stick to about twice a week for foam rolling um, and go from there. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please leave me any comments below on anything you think I've missed out or you'd like to hear next time. Um, please like, please subscribe. We've got content coming every week at the moment. Um, I want to continue doing this. Uh, building up a nice little portfolio for you guys to refer to. Um, don't forget to check out my Instagram as well. We've got um, snippets and pictures coming up on there a bit more regularly than YouTube. Um, and again, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.